Hi everyone, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. Welcome to our YouTube channel where we're going to be doing some more quick compositions. And like I said in some of the other ones, I use these, you know, I usually do a couple of these a day. And, and what it does, it just kind of lightens me up, gets me practiced up. There's a lot of artists, especially fine artists, that believe that you should always warm up before getting into your painting. Whether you just take a board and you, you know, push paint around and, and everything, it gets your, your mind connected to your brush again. Well, I don't just do that. I create little paintings, which are a lot of fun, which I've shown you on some of the other videos. So let's create another one here today. I've got a little 8x10. These are great little paintings if you have a little frame. And I have, you know, all kinds of just little inexpensive frames I can put them in and, and, and try, you know, out on them. I think maybe I'll paint one for a dark uh, frame here today, which means... I'm going to be using some darker colors there, so let's get it uh, let's get it done here. It's a little uh, MDF panel that I uh, got here, and I, I based it with a little bit of a medium white color, which I use a lot, which is just white, and a little yellow oxide, a little bit of uh, black. I use my fusion brushes. These are my uh, Global Art Supply fusion brushes. I'll use two today, one for the background, one for the painting. And then I use the Heritage uh, Multimedia Acrylics, which I have made global. And all of that is in for other uh, videos for you to watch. So we have them all on our channel here, how I make some of this stuff. So let's get into the painting here, okay? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize most of this yellow uh, background here. I might even just take uh, and, and, let, and uh, put a little bit brighter uh, yellow here, some yellow oxide. Now, what I do with these quick compositions is this gives me an idea to a way to work out some different color combinations or something that I might not have done before. So I might take a, a little yellow or even like a, a, a let's put just a, a bit of our naphthol red uh, light into that to create some orange into that background. Something that I would not normally do and it allows me to, uh, you know, kind of play with some colors and try some different things. That's what I like to do with these, uh, these compositions because as an artist, you should always be exploring colors and new looks and, you know, and it's the artist that set trends and stuff. So you can go in and, and find some of these color movements. Someone goes, wow. And you have a rule that is called a disproportionate color. I used to teach a lot of color theory, a lot of interior design and teach colorists. And you have a rule what's called uh, disproportionate color. And disproportionate means as the area in which a color, uh, as the area increases, the color's intensity or the color's, basically its tonal values will increase. The eye's ability to see it increases. So in other words, like if I am painting here and I, I put this color out, if I put some naphtha red out here and I, and I put a little dot of that, it's hard for you to see the real intensity to the color. But if I increase the area of it, this color, will look brighter than this color here but they're the same color and that is just because I've increased the area of it so what that law was called the law of disproportionate color and color theorists and um, uh, you know people who work with the colors interior designers and stuff when we use that and we always say that you can spark any room or you can spark any painting with a little bit of uh, an intense color so if I'm painting here on this smaller board I might be able to use some colors a little bit more intense you know, spark some color that I would not be able to normally use in some other paintings. And give it a try. These are fun little paintings that you can give it a try. Let's take some uh, green, uh, some pine green down here. You know, that's a nice warm uh, green. And let's work a little bit of that down here where we'd have some contrast and some stuff moving through. Maybe this would be, you know, where your leaves, I always kind of imagine, you know, leaves and stuff working through that. So let's work some of that into here like this you know, some of that color working out here. Just, you know, do some, have some fun with it. Try some different things. Push the color around. Maybe a little burnt sienna into it and we can uh, set up some of our, our stems and movements here that we'd have into, you know, into a floral if we're doing that there. So let's, just, let's play with that. Now, sometimes I'll go ahead and paint right into, you know, the area there. Sometimes I will take and I will I'll lift out some of that color just a little bit. I don't want to lift it all out because I want some of that color in there for harmony. But let's put a rose down in here and let's put a rose like uh, right out into this direction here like this. Maybe one right down over here. Okay, so we'll play with some different colors here like that. And I'm just taking out a little bit of the color, not all the color, because I want that to work together for harmony, okay? So just a little bit of the color I take out. That makes it easier to apply other colors and that those colors won't get too thick on you. And because if the paint gets too thick, if, if you're not used to working with that, it becomes more difficult to paint. All right, 
So I'll go down to my number 10 fusion flat here. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually physically toss in some of the white color here that I'll be using into my flowers. Maybe a nice peachy color here. Let's get our white. Let's get a little bit of this uh, red, natural red, light, and yellow. And let's just start to uh, to put in, we'll paint the rose a little different technique for you here today. A little fast one here. And so we'll start to, to put in the shape of the rose here like this. That we would use right with these lights and let that light color see it'll just pick up and see how I push out. I don't always stroke in. I don't, you know, I paint for movement. So here I'm pushing this out like this and pushing this around. I want to build the uh, center part of this rose up a bit more here, a bit more light here, right in there like that. We'll have some petals that'll come out here like this. I just pull some of those colors out. So I've built up the front with more light and I've let this other part just be lost back there. Now we'll just take a little bit of this. We'll soften it out. Let's change the tone up. Maybe a bit more of our naphthal red light. We can even cool this. Let's just cool this a little bit of our red violet into that. That'll change that tone of that, of that up and see how it's a little bit darker, a little bit cooler. And so the rose that I paint down here will not have quite as much interest for it down here. And let's do that again. Let's change that tone up, darken that up a bit here. And I just added a little green in my burnt uh, sienna here to, to this, and that'll change that tone up too. So we're gonna paint white roses here, but uh, we'll, we'll let these colors change a bit in here, and the tones change, and that's gonna give you more interest. Now, to harmonize the two roses, so once I use a color like that to keep that harmony in there, I'll take a little bit of that color and I'll add that into this rose. So this rose will pick up some of those colors and now you can see that harmony coming back and around through there. So I'll take a little bit of that cool and I'll add just a bit of that into this rose, just movement. So I imagine like this is gonna be the center. So all my movements and stuff kind of either round the rose bowl up like this or they pull in like that. And I'm being very light with my my pressure there and and uh, you know just casually applying it here. So what's really what really makes these real fun fast compositions, what really makes the rose look great is its center. When I add its center in its bowl, that's when you really see the rose. But I want to show you a little different way of painting the rose here today. So we'll continue to build. So instead of going in and adding the darks in the center, I'm going to continue to build here for just a moment. Okay, I'm going to come right back to my center of interest rose here, and I'm going to use some thicker white. Go right back to my white here, and we'll really deposit on here some of this white right up to the front. And we'll let this just kind of soften out here a little bit on this side. I'm going to imagine that the light is up here, the shadow side would be down here to the low side. So I'm going to build this front part. And I just kind of curved the brush a little bit to create the roundness, the movement of the rose here. And I'll build a little more light right up here into the front this way here. And I'll start to, that actually makes this rose nice and light. And I can lift off like this because I have that shadow under there anywhere that I want to express or leave that bowl. So I can lift off like this and 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 take some of that light out. I always wipe with my paper towel. I always have a nice paper towel in my hand all the time, wiping that brush. I can lift out some of that excess. Now, let's come over here. Let's pick up. When you're an artist, you should work all your composition at the same time. Don't get wrapped up in one rose there. We'll put that on. We'll come over to this one. And we'll put a little bit of that light tone into this one. Maybe a little bit of that coming out where, you know, you might have a petal or two coming out here. So I'll pu just pull out. See how I work my brush pretty quick. And I work this fast and I talk this fast and I work this fast because it keeps me from playing in it, you know. Um, and, and that's a problem. Is I have a problem with that as now. Play and play and play and play. And when you play and play and play and play, everything becomes the same color. And so I've got to work fast. I've got to work all the roses and I got to keep going because I play with it. And if you have that problem, work faster, move faster through your roses. Now, only thing that I'm keeping in mind is that this rose is going to be lighter. This rose will be a little bit darker here. And then this one will be even a little bit uh, darker yet. So 
we'll, and we'll oval this one up just a little bit more so it's a little bit more of a bud or something like that. So, And let's just push some of this green in and out as well in through here and that will help me keep transparency and keep the size of this rose down just a bit. Okay, so I have some major light petals showing up here. I have some of the lights. I'm going to add just a bit more light to, to this one here. Just pull down those strokes right there. Leave that Leave it a little bit softer. I don't, I you know, in many of the different things, like if you're painting with me in my Mastering Roses series and stuff, we'll go in and we'll set petals and we'll paint really pretty elegant roses and stuff. And when I paint quicker compositions of it, I'm here to practice the movement of the rose. That's what I want to do is practice movement more than anything else. So I don't worry too much about getting petals here. Your eye will define petals. I'm practicing movement. So now what I'll do is I'll come in and I'll pick the uh, the cooler tone. So I'm going to go up here to some of my reds. Let's get that naphtha red light. I had my cooler red violet I picked up there and a little burnt sienna. I just want to model this together to a tone. I'll start right in here where I want the center of that rose and I'll tap that color pretty heavy like that. And then I'm just going to move that color up and out, very little pressure under the brush, up and out like this that will create the rounding movement of the center of that rose like that. I'll wipe some of that extra, that white that's on my brush that I picked up there. Let's add a little bit of that here as a shadow to the low side of the rose, maybe all the way down here to this side of the rose, right like that. And even some of that green will come into here, will help my transparency to my rose here. Get some heavier strokes of this color right out here like that. That's kind of nice. Let that play up against that bright, bright backgrounds there. And let's come over and do the same thing over here. Let's set the center up into this one here. Okay. And let's put a little bit of a shadow down here onto that side here. Maybe pull that right out to here. So we definitely have that lower shadow side to our flowers there. We might take a little bit of our bright, which was that yellow oxide, yellow that we had here. Let's move up here where it's nice and clean. So we have that yellow and let's just strike a little bit of that right down into here. So this rose picks up and carries a little bit of that background color, maybe a bit of that into this rose as well. I'm always a, a big advocate of carrying the color. The, the artist should be touching some of these colors into some of these some of these background colors you should harmonize that background color into your painting at the same time let's take a little bit of that red violet and some of that burnt sienna and a little of that red here darken that again right down here and let's get a little darker here and set this little bud here that we'll do on the rose there so that's all that that one really needs right there we'll take some of that dark that i just used here we'll just put out a little bit more. I'm going to tap this right into the corner of my brush here, those burnt sienna and red violet, so they're kind of modeled together. Right into the corner, push that corner right into the center and do a small, small kind of circular mo motion coming out. And again, I'm not painting petals, I'm painting for movement, so I want to put some more movement into that and define that up a little bit more. That puts a little more contrast here for my shadows. There's another shadowing stroke here. I can carry that up and around a little bit up that side. Just a nice light little lift like that. And tap a little bit in any place. I might want to have a little more shadow. Maybe that rose there. Let's add just a touch more here into the center. A little bit more than that. Got a little weak there. Into the center of this one here. Boom, right in there. And walk that, that out there, that shadow. You can use your hand to soften everything, but this is what I'm looking for. See this lovely movement of color. Let's take some of that yellow and walk that up the bowl here to that side. Isn't that kind of pretty, that movement there inside those that rose there, that nice bright color. Let's take and uh, put out the idea here of a, a leaf, just a, a leaf shape. We won't get wild and crazy with these leaves. Maybe a stem or so out here, coming out this way, out that side here. Maybe um, um, you could take a little, a little red violet with that, a little bit of your burnt sienna, and that gives you a nice toned kind of like shadow there. 
maybe walk out a little vein line. I just put a little bit there, a little curved stroke of that there. And uh, we can use a stroke of that or so in here into the center. We'll put a little bit more. Let's get some some pine green and some red violet. Those two together, about one to one, somewhere around there, makes a real dark, cool, deep, rich, uh, cool green tone that's just really nice into putting in shadows. And see, that puts more contrast in here into my center of interest right down in this way. And I'll, I'll just kind of use that on the chisel there and add a few other little movements there. Doesn't that look nice? And... Um, Boy, let's see what that's going to be looking like into that frame. Isn't that going to be, step back just a bit, isn't that going to be great inside that frame? And see, it's picking up that dark tone that's right in there. And sometimes on an inexpensive frame like that, I take even take some of that tone and just brush it on over that uh, frame, and that causes the two to go together. They're really nice. So we can put a little bit of that out here. Maybe there's a bit of that movement right out there. A little bit of that movement right out here was just, Let's just create some movement here out that side there for that part of that rose. Isn't that nice? And let's take a little bit of that green and, you know, and sometimes I do this just even with slightly on the green side, that nice deep tone and add that even into the, the center part of that rose and create a little more, you know, a little bit more interest, a little more depth into that. And let's put a little red into that as well. Now, I'll wipe my brush really well. Here, right, wipe this brush really well. Let's go back towards our whites, our nice whites that we originally painted with here. And I'm going to pick up, see how thick my white is here. This is how I like, almost like toothpaste. And I'm actually not mixing here. I'm loading this brush up with thick white paint that I can come in and push on some, uh, you know, some lighter colors here that to to make them more like the the petals of a bowl of the rose here like this now i'll wipe that brush take off the excess and i'll lift off like this to reset that uh, shadow back in there and this is the type of movement i do back and forth like this several times sometimes i'll pick up a little edge and make a little petal here or the idea of a little petal like this and, you know onto the rose close off part of the rose wipe my brush and just pull down a bit and leave just a bit of that light edge there on that petal that works so well and put a, a little bit here a little bit of that light movement here and there into the rows coming down and in that just gives a nice nice interest to it the main part of the rows here though you want to get this nice light petal out to here so sometimes i stroke in sometimes i just do this and i put a heavy load of color right out like this leaving that uh, rose where it can pick up some of those greens and those other tones. So, you know, because that just gives it more visual interest and stuff. So I, I stroke roses all different kinds of ways. And, and, you know, sometimes I do more specific petals. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll pick up a little corner or a little edge of the brush, turn the brush so I can use it on its chisel, and I make more of a petal, like coming out here like this onto that one there. So it all depends on, you know, how I'm reading the rose, what I want to do with this uh, particular rose, how I want it to come through here. I maybe want a little more white on that petal there, so I will pick up a big heavy load of white, and I'm just going to strike it right there onto that petal like that. Now, I wipe my brush, and I can use it negatively wise here and just lift off some of that extra white right there. And let's lift off a little bit from the shadow out, and we'll leave just a touch of that right there onto the tip of that of that petal. So I apply it, and then I move my brush in all different kinds of ways to you know to make the the rest of the petal. So let's put one right across here like this. Let's put a heavy stroke of color right here like this, and we can lift up like this. Wipe that brush. I even wipe it on my towel sometimes just to pick off the extra just a bit here and pull down sometimes pull down sometimes lift off which takes off pull down softens it a bit but that creates that movement there and we create that nice rounding movement and you have another petal that you just set in there like that and you could use the chisel of the brush like this to set in like a, a chiseled petal there you know that gives a different look to it maybe out here a little bit of a chiseled petal petal right out there 
coming in. Let's put another one right in here like this. That pedal comes in. So you're setting up all different kinds of ways here on the rows. And then onto this side here, you might even start to head a little bit more into the darks here. And uh, you might not have, you might have just a little bit of light poking up into these out here that set up some of that rose here onto this side here. A just a little bit of light, but most of this side stays a little bit more into the darks here, just like that. You can restate any shadow you want. Put more some more shadow in there, lift it up or pull it down here. It gives different ways, you know, movement. All I look for in that rose to make a pretty rose is movement. That's what I like to do. So let's get a little bit more yellow right into this one right here that picks up that nice, lovely yellow from our background there. So let's intensify that a little bit more. Maybe even a, that's yellow oxide. So a little brighter would be just a little bit of Hansa yellow into that. Which Hansa yellow is brighter, but it's a little bit weaker of a painting uh, yellow. It's more, uh, it's a semi-transparent, not opaque like the yellow oxide. But together, those work wonderful. So that puts up some of that nice, lovely yellow. Let's toss a little bit in there. Maybe a bit of that yellow right into here, into that rose as a little bit of a glow. And see, you can just pull that right down into here like this and let that, let that sit in there. So you see that movement that's in there in that rose. That's, that's very pretty like that, you know. So, and that's what's fun about these compositions like this. You can... You can try all kinds of things. Now, we want to keep this, uh, here's was our white that we were applying, so we want to keep it a little darker. So let's take some of that white right up here. So when we paint this flower here, when we put this on, we want this flower to be a little darker. So I strike that, and then I'll just move this color around a little bit. Maybe uh, strike the outside petal here, what the, the reaching petal might be right there. And we're just going to paint for the movement of this. I'll lift some of this off so that... That movement there looks like a bit of a rose here and some movement here maybe a little bit here coming out like that a rose doesn't need that much to say it's a rose that's why I like to practice these quick compositions like this because many times in a rose you can overpaint it really quick you just need some nice movement a few petals around like that and see that starts to look like a rose there see um, let's take a little bit of our Go up here towards our red, and we just add a little bit of light movement, kind of circular here, but that helps us get some movement there to our centers. Maybe close off one side of the rows here. We wanted to keep this more shadow, so sometimes I'll do that. I'll just lift off like this. That lifts that shadow off, and it starts to create that whole side of the rows out there like that. So they're really, they're really casual, but what I'm doing is in a rose, I'm always visualizing the three circles, which we talk about in the mastering roses and all the rose painting, you know, books and stuff I do. I always start with the main shape of the roses is three roses. It's its center, its bowl, and its outside. So you have three parts, the center, the bowl, and then the outside. And I take those three parts there and I break that up and then I paint for movement and you know, and that's that's basically how I do it. I just, with these quick compositions, what makes really pretty little roses is I just paint for quick movement here. And so I pull that across there. Now I've got to imagine the bowl of the rose coming up. And I'll just lift off some of that color, and that makes it really pretty. Maybe I want to put a little chisel right here, so that might be the idea of another petal right here coming down like that. And I might leave it just like that. That looks pretty nice. That's just a little touch, touch in there. It doesn't take too much. Let's let's chisel this right in here just a bit more and make that other little petal onto uh, that one right there. Now, finally, we'll come down, darken down a little bit more. Let's uh, keep it maybe a bit more on the yellow here as well. And let's just keep a softer. Uh, we'll paint this more oval in shape so it's more of a bud. We'll imagine this little bud like this coming around. Maybe it has a little deeper center here coming around one side. So a little bit more of an oval shape makes it more of a bud. Get some yellow oxide right into that, this light color, right? Model that up with some yellow oxide. Let's just put a few strokes of that. I'm watching the lightness of the other flowers here. 
Let's just put a few strokes of that. Maybe a little bit here to the outside, like a, a bud petal is beginning to open up here. Pull towards that. Sometimes I'll just take my finger and just run that over like that to keep that very suggestive and understated here. That's one of the hardest things to learn to paint. And there is no doubt that it is difficult. And what you have to do is you have to paint a thousand of them until you become so comfortable with them that you can do them. And I tell that to my students all the time. And because that's what I do. That's what I've done with these roses to get that comfortable. See, I just, I'm following. My brush just almost does it just now because I've done so many of them, okay? You know, and it's kind of like cooking. You know, your first time you cook something, you measure everything out. Then you realize, eh, I can use the palm of my hand to measure out the salt and drop it in there. I'm doing the same thing with the rose. I used to worry about my pattern and follow the pattern. And after I painted so many of them, I don't need any of that anymore. I have the idea. My brush just kind of follows in there. That's the, And how do you get all that? You paint a thousand of them. You paint a hundred of them. You get, you start painting and painting every day. And then you'll, you'll pick it up. You know, you'll pick it up and it'll, it'll start to happen for you. It does. It has, has it happens. So now I, I've got this one just a little bit too light. So I'll just take a little bit of my darker tone here, a little red into it and stuff like this. And I'm just going to lift off here from the shadow out or from the highlight in, but I'm just going to impart a little bit darker tone, a little yellow, a little bit darker tone, just to set that rose back just a bit more there. Now you have to decide, do I want to, uh, uh, you know, do I want to do anything with the leaves? I kind of like that. I don't think I'm going to shape up any leaves. I, you know, I might shape up like this one out here. I, you start to shape up leaves. They start to take away from the roses, but you can have a couple of them shaped up here. And, you know, so that it, they draw their little pointers here. You can see it draws that viewer's eye up there like that. Um, I don't think I'll do too many more. Maybe one down here. I'll point up just a bit, you know, give more of a, a leaf shape too. Uh, I do, when I paint roses, I do like to take a little burnt sienna and I just like to make a little triangle shape out here of a stroke sometimes. I like to, to give that little bit of a thorn. I just find that little thorns like that, just uh, that you make that little triangle shape, that just adds to in the painting there and makes it kind of fun. So, very fast, bright, bright yellow. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's actually, you know, you don't think that that yellow oxide would be that bright like that, but nice and yellow oxide and a little bit of that red. Boy, that works really, really nice. And uh, you know, yeah, it's and just kind of smash that around and play the and play the colors and you know, that's kind of pretty. And then the cooler colors that come through there. And you've done all of it in less than thirty minutes. You take that, you drop it into a nice little uh, frame like this. And you have yourself a nice, uh, nice quick little painting like that. You know, you paint for movement. You don't paint very specific petals. You paint for movement. You paint for speed, because that keeps you from playing with it. Here it is in a gold frame, and a gold frame's kind of nice with that too. So you can decide what it is that you, uh, what you want to put that in. Okay, so paint for paint for speed. Put some of that bright color. Play with your colors. You know. Try some different color combinations. And here I'm keeping it very warm and then putting some cool colors there inside. So whenever I add that red violet or you have a quinacridone violet, I have that over there. That would be absolutely beautiful in one of those. And rather than add that quinacridone violet to this one now, I'll take 20, 30 minutes and go paint another one and try some quinacridone in it this time. That's what makes it fun. And if you paint those like that, and if you paint a couple of these a day in a couple of weeks, which is, you know, 20, 30 paintings, you're on your road to doing some very gorgeous roses. As long as you start to work on that speed and just painting for movement, don't concentrate on the petals. They'll come, build the color heavy, just take the color off, but always working in the shape of the rose, always working down here, lifting up and working into the round part of the bowl. This part, your brush is always moving this way. This part of the brush, your brush is always moving in and out like this. So you get the growth. So you get the rounding, the growth, and the cupping here or the new petals coming out. All right. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you on the other videos.